Hello and welcome to another episode of Couch Therapy where I, Dave Tripp, and discuss uh, all manner of questions regarding Japan and maybe some sort of cultural topic, something interesting like that. More of a, a chill out sort of series as opposed to the more edited stuff that I release on Saturdays. And the topic today is a beginner's guide to how to teach English in Japan. I kind of get lost in the minutia sometimes where I, I get emails and I'm answering all these very specific questions, but I forget that a large portion of the people that watch the channel or come to the channel are people who have just suddenly found this inspiration to come over and they need the most basic questions answered. They don't need to know uh, what's school lunch like or what's a day in the life. They, they need to know the, the sort of basics, like how do I even find a job? How do I, what are some companies that I can work for? All these kind of basic things. So, with that in mind, I got this email today and where I was like, oh, this is so simple, is this worth answering? I thought, no, this is actually especially worth, worth answering because this is, this is a whole new year, there's a whole new term coming, there's a whole new generation of people who want to come over and do it. So, just quickly read through the email. It's, uh, uh, first off, I saw your videos. Uh, my dream since I was a child was to be able to live in Japan. I really want to teach in Japan. I just need help getting started, plain and simple, right? Um, can you guide me a little or provide me with information on how to get started, where to go, a company to work for, things like this. So, uh, let's jump into it. I kind of I gave the preamble at the beginning to introduce it. That was Lane. Thank you for writing Lane. I'll let you know once this is done by email that I've made the video. Uh, so, first things first. Uh, I can name a couple of companies that you could start with. Um, as well as places that you could find the job. So I think like uh, where I found mine was on Craigslist. So you can search teaching English in Japan uh, on Craigslist and you'd be able to find probably a number of these large companies uh, posting for different job positions. And what you're going to find if you're just starting to get interested in Japan and you're searching on something like Craigslist is what's known as a dispatch company. A dispatch company is a company that works as an intermediary between the Japanese school boards and the teachers. And this is a benefit and a disservice at the same time. It's a, it's a blessing and a curse. Uh, so to name a few of those companies, I've said already, trying to make this factual, like I say, it's a guide, it's not simply me talking. Uh, you can check Craigslist, but then a couple companies that I would recommend, uh, you can check out are Eon, uh, you can check out Interact, probably the largest, that's like so many people write me where they're like, I've gotten a, a job with them. And then the one that I would probably recommend most, which is uh, popular in the Kanto region, and I've wrote a number of people in emails for this, is Altia, Altia.com. You can check them out. I'm not paid by any of these people, in no way is this uh, advertising for anyone. This is just the information that I've gathered and sort of the opinion, opinion that I've developed. Uh, and I'll talk about the different reasons, so I don't want to swamp you because obviously there's a ton of them and if you really do search, but we'll go with these three for example. So the big benefit of a dispatch company is, is that they're going to hire you from abroad. And the big part of getting over to work in Japan, probably the biggest thing right away, is getting a work visa and these companies uh, who hire internationally are going to get you a work visa while you're still outside of the country. This may be the single greatest benefit of one of these companies. Uh, why is why are why did I choose the ones that I've chosen? Okay, well, uh, Eon. I know from speaking to people who work there that they actually provide pay raises. So if you don't want to move away from a dispatch company when you initially come over, Eon, from the sounds of it, actually provides their employees with pay raises each year and probably quite click quickly. Um, you can be in a pay range somewhere reaching around 280,000 yen, which is not too bad when you're over in Japan. 280,000, depending on where you live, is okay. Um, why would I recommend somebody like Interact then? I've said Eon, it's kind of a, about the money. Uh, let's talk about Interact. Well, Interact, because it's the largest, when you are coming over, you can give a sort of preference as to where you want to go. That's one of the questions that they ask uh, when, you, when you sign up for one of these, these companies, is where do you want to go? And because Interact is so large, 
then it's actually easier for you to give a preference that then might end in the result that you want. So if you say, I want to live in Hokkaido or Kyushu or on the East Coast or West Coast, they've got places all over the place. So flexibility. Uh, that's something that you get from Interact. So uh, maybe I'll put down in the description down below that uh, you can do that. Okay, so what I've talked about there is dispatch companies and the dispatch companies for the most part are working with the public school board. The other alternative that you have is something called an Ekaiwa. An Ekaiwa is in the private sector. That's the big difference. Uh, dispatch companies mostly dealing with uh, public school, Ekaiwa's private sector. Um, now, what does this mean? This sort of like uh, thing that you might draw from this as a beginner. Ikaiwas in the private sector usually have you, where what you call a teacher in the public sector is an ALT, an assistant language teacher. You really are, when you sign up for one of these Ikaiwas, you get to be the, um, you get to be the lead teacher of the classroom. And it depends on what you're coming over for, but that really appeals to people. And if you want to have a longer term career in Japan, I'm tempted to more recommend that path because if you go with an Eikaiwa, then you'll really develop your chops. You're going to lead all your lessons, you won't assist all the time, and so you will actually far more develop as a teacher. And I don't know a lot, but this is a beginner's guide to so a place to start. Um, one that I know a little bit more about, if you search my channel, you'll find more videos on it, is called Peppy Kids Club. So Peppy Kids Club, and the people that I talk to for the most part, they've had good, good experiences. Yeah, there's some shitty details mixed in with it. Uh, but they've had pretty good experiences working with, uh, working with Peppy Kids Club. And as I say, it prepares you. Now, I've done another video where I talked about how to get the best job in Japan. So this will somewhat blend in with the theme of that one. If you get one of these dispatch companies, you come over, you've gotten the interview, you've gotten yourself the, uh, the work visa that you're now here. The benefit of a dispatch company or an Aikaiwa like Peppy Kids Club that uh, hires you from overseas becomes a problem once you're here. So you, you put two and two together that if they're hiring internationally, then they probably have a much, much larger pool of staff to draw on, which means that you are much more replaceable, which means that the uh, aspects like benefits or generally your salary, these companies aren't going to be so competitive because they're like, oh, what, you, you want a higher salary? Well, Forget you, we can hire somebody internationally and we don't need to worry about that kind of thing. Your value in a company like that is much lower because they have a larger pool that they can draw upon. Now, if you've been here for a year and you're doing pretty good and you've developed your chops a little bit, you feel more confident as a teacher, then the next thing that you would do, I would say if not right away, then uh, start searching within uh, six months, is look at other job opportunities that exist, of which there are many, and if you search once you're here, you'll notice that a lot of them are only available to people who have already moved into Japan. So there you go, you got your work visa, you're set up, you're developing your skill as a teacher, and now you're ready to go into the horizon and move on to something better. And then you can look for something, if you're already in the Eikaiwa, if you're in the private sector, there's dozens of different, like I couldn't name all of them, all these like little mini private schools all over in every single region of Japan. And they're only going to be growing, I would say in the following years because you have the Olympics to anticipate. And there's a big push from the government to increase the English ability in the population now. So all of these schools are thriving. Eikaiwas, because they're private, because they're run more like a business, the sort of, uh, call it like, upwards mobility is definitely uh, more developed in an Eikaiwa uh, than it would be, say, in like a dispatch company. So if you have a year's experience and you start looking around and you see, oh, okay, there's another private school, I'll go and apply for that. And I say, usually, start to look for these within six months because if you, I would say if you're, and this is something I'm guilty of, but it's only in retrospect now that I realize this, if you're in Japan for two years, and by your third year you haven't found a job that's paying you at least 280000 and you care about your salary that you would like it to increase, you're doing something wrong. By your third year in Japan, absolutely you should be able to get yourself a salary of at least 280000 You should. There's like, 
as I say, I kind of gave that little uh, caveat or whatever for it that if that's not a priority and you're like, I came here to explore, money is hardly the thing, then don't worry about it so much. But if it is, you can find it in these Akaiwas or the last thing that I would talk about, which is direct hire positions. Uh, and direct hire positions I will talk about many more times. Like I say, this is a beginner's guide. This is more for people who are kind of dipping their toe in the water and figuring things out. Uh, direct hire position is fantastic because where a dispatch company is an intermediary, there's the company, there's you, and there's the school board. Effectively, with the direct hire, you're removing the dispatch company and now suddenly it's just you and the school board. And so because of that, there's not a huge chunk of your pay that's being taken to go and pay the dispatch company. You're, you're going to get benefits because if you work directly for them, then you're considered like a public uh, social, like a uh, public servant position, and because of that, then you get uh, whether it's the pension or your health care that's contributed into as well. Uh, so, this is a kind of a basic first roadmap. Go directly to these websites if you want to apply for these companies. Search on Craigslist. Um, I can link, I'll probably do a link to a playlist at the end of this. Uh, specifically to my teaching playlist, so if you want to browse through there, I, I can, I'll always answer more direct questions, but the, that playlist has much more, as I say, the minutia, the like details about dress, a day in the life, and things like that. But this is like a hard and fast example of how you would get over here. Um, my biggest mistake I made when I first started was not realizing the amount of options that are available to you here, of which there are many. There are many. Many, many, many. So, uh, that's kind of this talk for now. I've talked you through getting the job, what to do in your first year, a sort of comparison, and the different paths that you might go down once you've gone beyond the, uh, the say, call it second year. I think you should be going for a new job in your second year, but some people, they, they want to acclimatize. They're like, no, I don't want to move apartments. I don't want to go through all that stress. I'm going to wait to my third, and I understand that too. And then there are those who think about money differently, and they're like, I'm going to cruise, which is also okay, I guess if that's your thing. Uh, other things to talk about at the end of the video, this is probably a futile attempt to, uh, to get things going, but if you are a person who watches this channel and you've made it this far, you're probably a person who watches this channel frequently, you may, if you, if you care about this kind of thing, beside the sus subscribe button at the top of the screen on my channel, there's a bell. And by clicking on that bell, you can turn on notifications for whenever I upload videos. Because I had, I will not exaggerate this number, I had one person talk to me and say that they had not realized that a video had gone up. And they're like, I love to see your videos when they go up like right away. I don't, I don't want to wait the day afterwards. And I was like, oh, okay, well that's probably because the notifications aren't on. So if you want to be notified right away, then go up to that bell beside the subscribe button on the YouTube channel itself and turn the notifications on. If you don't, you're happy getting them whenever, whatever, that's cool. But I'll probably kind of give this reminder out every Tuesday uh, for these hardcores who I appreciate who want to catch the videos as soon as they're going up. Uh, last question at the end of the video, you made it this far. So if you went down this route and you're coming to teach in Japan, which route do you think you would go down? Would you go down the sort of like more predictably stable, more assistant, but sometimes in a leadership role, uh, ALT position in the public sector? Or do you kind of want to conquer the world of teaching and lead absolutely everything and go down the Akaiwa or private sector? I'm curious. In a different life, I wonder what I would have done. A lot of it would have depended on how I first arrived to Japan. So let me know down in the comments. Let me know in the voting up and whatever side that it shows up on. And please continue to send me your questions because I'm going through them and uh, more videos to come. Thanks for checking out this one. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, follow me on all the social media that you saw flash down below. Catch you guys in the next video. Ciao for now. Peace.